The king of the dwarfs of Abrakar, the elf king of Therenia Adar, and Balazar, the hegemon of Basilea sat round the council table. The necromancer Mortibris and his quest for an ancient wisdom was going to threaten the known world. The ruins of Dolgarth have been defiled, and it would appear that those who did so practice the unholy arts. The dead must not walk in my ancestors' halls, rumbled Gullick sternly, the grizzled dwarf king. Balazar nodded. The insult is not just to the dwarfs. Our allies from Therenia Adar bring us evidence of our own holy warriors having been turned to the ends of this foul wizard. This cannot stand. The hold was once well known to my kin, in a different age. It is possible that some traces of them still remain there. I would seek that any elven artifacts be brought back to us unmolested, that they might be properly returned home. Ariandra's voice was measured and assured, as was the way of the elves. It was agreed by each of the three rulers that a quest to Dolgarth was indeed required. If nothing else then to see if the threat of the upstart Mortibris was real, and stop him if proved so. The four champions selected for this difficult quest were known well by the rulers present, but not to each other. Rorden, a stout dwarf with a head for battle and a taste for strong ale. Madriga, a former esteemed captain of the Sea Guard. Danner, a humble wizard and student of the great colleges of magic in Basilea. And lastly Orlef, the gruff barbarian, a successful mercenary who wasn't afraid of dealing in trouble. The heroes sat around a large fireplace, the warm glow of the fire dancing upon their faces as they shared snippets of stories from adventures past and what might lie ahead. The contact they were waiting for approached from the shadows at the back of the room. I am Master Rambus, arch-scribe from the Universities of Magic, advisor in the arcane arts to His Highness and Holy Balazar. Mortibris will have many sentries and watchers posted to avoid being surprised whilst he searches the ancient halls of Dolgarth. It would be of great benefit to approach unseen if you can. To do that you need to know where you are going. None are still alive that could offer that information, but there is other knowledge that will never fade with the passing of time. What better way to avoid detection than to know all of the hidden entrances designed by the dwarfs of Dolgarth themselves? Dureg was neither the greatest of dwarf lords nor had the grandest of holds, but I have learned that he held the largest collection of dwarfen maps outside of Aberkar. His ruined hold is east of here, no more than three days' ride. It is long abandoned after he met his end during a particularly nasty goblin incursion. I have heard tales of death lurking the corridors of his old home, though I doubt they're as worrisome as the greater threat of Mortibris, but I wouldn't discount a possible connection. Evil seeks evil just as gold breeds greed. There is a small town by the name of Yammerton, close to Dureg's ruins. It lies on the trade route into Aberkar, so good caravans means good equipment if you have the coin. I'd suggest you set up camp on the edge of the ruins and you can expect to buy any decent equipment as you see fit whilst able to rest between excursions into the depths of the dungeons. So it is that I propose a new venture before you tackle Mortibris. Seek out Dureg's halls and claim the map of Dolgarth. Learn to fight with each other, before you have to fight for the whole world. Hi everyone, welcome to Fingers, Thumbs and Fits, and today we will be playing the first mission of Dungeon Saga Origins. Um, this is the first campaign, The Trial of Tivany, and uh, yeah, I'm quite excited to get back into this. I have played this uh, as a private playthrough already, so I kind of know a little bit about what to expect. But uh, I've not played it for a fair while now, so uh, it'll be nice to get back into it again. Now, before we actually get into it, let's check out who we're actually going to be playing with. Now, unlike a certain other channel, which is very good, and I will recommend, uh, I will put a link in the description. They've done a very good playthrough. Um, they've used some of the Kickstart characters. I, however, am going to use the core characters, um, just strangely for a bit of variation. Um, you know, we don't want a load of videos to be the same after all. So, uh, yeah. So our core characters for Dungeon Saga Origins are, firstly, we have Madriga the Elf. She's a, an Elf Ranger. She's got a movement of six. Uh, melee of three, a ranged four, and a defense of two. And her feet 
is going to be Hail of Arrows, which basically means uh, instead of a regular shoot action, she can use the feet once per game, and she can shoot three times. So that's pretty cool. That's our Elf Ranger. Our next one is going to be Orlaf the Barbarian. Uh, he's got a movement of five, a combat of five, a range of zero, which means he can't make any ranged attacks, and a defense of two. And his feat is going to be unstoppable, which basically just means he keeps fighting if he kills stuff. Um, so that's our Barbarian. Our next one up is going to be Rawdon the Dwarf Fighter. He's got a movement of four, a combat of four, a ranged of zero, and a defense of three. And his feat will be Relentless, which means this round he cannot take any damage, and he can also move an additional three. So handy for getting out of tight spots. And finally, where would a fantasy dungeon crawler be without a wizard? Danor, our human wizard, has a movement of five, combat of two, range of zero, defense of one, and his feat is focus, which basically means he can retain a spell for use again later on. Now, as he's a spellcaster, he also gets to pick two um, sets of spells. So I've gone elemental with Danor. And firstly, because why wouldn't you? We've got Pyromancy, which has various degre uh, degrees of um, spells. You've got a Flame Bolt, which um, attacks an enemy that you can see. You've got Burn, that will just... Um, attack a model that's around and see a flame that it's kind of like an AOE attack. And he's also going to have Hydromancy. So obviously he hasn't decided which school he wants to specialise in yet. Um, but this is predominantly for Healing Spring, which can heal himself or other heroes. So that's a useful spell. So that's our heroes. And uh, let's get to it then. Scrambling down the narrow dusty steps into the entrance chamber, the heroes are met by a dry rattling sound. From the gloom just ahead, a shuffling skeletal warrior covered in half-rotten rags and wielding a jagged rusted sword emerges. The rumors had been right, this ancient place isn't empty and abandoned. The restless dead walk here and they seldom walk alone. The heroes need to defeat the undead and find their way through this place. Okay, hi there guys. Um, so we've got the first part of the board set up here. Um, you can see that we've got our first corridor set up. We've got our four heroes laid out and we've got our first enemies on the board already. Now, um, I'm just going to start playing this. Um, I was going to do a let's play, a how to play video, uh, which I might do. Uh, at some point, which I know is a little bit redundant now, but keep an eye out for that if you're a bit unsure of how these mechanics work. So um, I'm just going to play this as if you guys know what I'm doing. So let's begin, shall we? We have two skeleton warriors standing in our way, which we probably want to deal with. So we are going to deal with this first one, most definitely. Um, and we are going to deal with it, with it using Orlaf. So he's going to move his whoops, one, two, three. So he's standing in front of that skelly. And he's going to attack him. And we are now going to take Orlaf's combat, which is five dice. Uh, he's going to be the blue dice and the skeleton warrior who has a combat of two we're going to take his dice which are the white ones 
sorry, rolling all Fs5, needing threes, well look at that, I mean, <laughs> okay, uh, they've all penetrated his armour, uh, just, now the skelly can't actually save against this, uh, it can take two off at a push, so let's see what happens, well it doesn't even do that. So, um, yeah, that skeleton has just literally been turned into dust. Well done, uh, Olaf. Um, so that's Olaf's turnover. Uh, we are now going to use Madriga to try and take out the other one. So she's going to go... Uh, I can't see the squares properly. One, two, three, four, five. And stand here. And she is going to shoot the skelly. Now, same thing applies really, just using the shoot stat instead of the combat stat. So, once again, we're going to use Madriga's shoot stat, which is four, against the skelly's combat stat, which is two. So, Madriga, once again, needing threes. Uh, she gets three of them, so one is uh, discarded. And a skelly in defense rolls a one and a two so these are incredibly weak skellies um, and so that one is also turned to dust and whatever's left is pinned against that pile of locks behind him so that's our enemies cleared out uh, we are going to move our dwarf up next he is going to go one, two, three, four, and join um, Olaf. And then we're going to go uh, one, two, three, keep our wizard rear. But, but now that there's no enemies on this part of the tile, he's going to explore and see if he can find something. So we take a card from the exploration deck. And he's found a potion of resistance. So uh, that's quite nice. Um, now, uh, this would ordinarily be the enemy's turn, but there aren't any enemies. Uh, so, as I'm using the AI Overlord rules, I am going to put a Wandering Spawn Point where we started. This means if this situation ever arises again, an enemy will spawn here next turn. It doesn't do it this turn, but it will do it next turn. And so it's now back to us. I think it's a good idea to use Orlaf to open the door, I think. Uh, one, two, three. Yes. So he's going to go one, two, three. He's going to open the door, insert appropriate creaky sounds here, which means there's a door there. We have a skeleton warrior guarding the other side of it, and we have a skeleton archer. Whoops, I can't reach over there. Over here. So he moved one, two, what did he move? One, two, three, he opened the door. Four, he's gonna move there. Now there's a bone of contention about this on whether or not you can attack an enemy around the corner through a door. I personally think you can. But actually, for the uh, sake of that, then, I will put Olaf in the room. Um, either way, that skeleton's going to get smacked. So, let's uh, see if we can pin this one against the wall. Needing threes. Well, one didn't go through. And once again, he didn't defend it. So, that skeleton warrior is no more. He lived a very short life. 
Uh, right, now our next one. We can play this safe, I reckon. And take Madriga. Go one, two, three, four, five. Stand behind Olaf. She's got a movement of six. Oh no, she's still going to stand behind Olaf. Yeah. And she's going to take a shot at the archer. Now, the archer, similar stats to uh, Skelly Warrior, but uh, it only has a defense of one and it has a range of three. So, Skelly archers are, you know, pretty good. Um, so, she's now going to take her dice. She, because he's only got a defense of one, it needs um, twos. So, Madriga needing twos. All of them. Archer, combat dice. Right, okay, so the six, so the five, but my five knocked out that four. So that archer is also now pinned to the wall. Um, if you can hear noises in the background, I do apologize. Our housemates are trying to figure out why our boiler is not working. So um, please, if you do hear noises in the background, I do apologize. Um, Right, anyway, we don't need to worry about that. There aren't any boilers in this dungeon. So, what's next? Danor is going to move into that room next, I think. Can he? One, two, three, four, five. He can get in there. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to stand here. And he's going to be the one to search this room once again. And this time we get... Oh, he finds a battle potion. Which is nice. Um, so he's, he's racking up the potions, which you'd think he would, being a wizard. He'd know what these potions were. So, uh, next, all that's left to do now is... Rawdon, he's just going to move into the room. So, Rawdon moves four, one, two, three, four. He's going to stand in the corner. Okay, so, Overlord's turn. Now, before you start getting complainy in the comments, I've just realised that I've completely forgotten to do something, and it's something that I always do, and I do apologise but I will be mindful to keep an eye on it in the future. And that is the Overlord's mood. Um, it should have changed to aggressive when I opened the door, which means that the Overlord could have checked to see if they could have interrupted a turn. Um, it didn't come into effect when I attacked the enemies because I killed them outright. So um, that's not going to make much of a difference. But yeah, um, I'll be a bit mindful of that in the future. I do apologise, so don't hate me in the comments. Um, it's I do keep forgetting, and I will. I'm going to leave a note stuck to something to make me keep reminding about the Overlord's mood. But yeah. Um, so anyway, um, as there's no enemies on the board, we get to spawn one, and the spawning enemy in this particular dungeon is a zombie so he's now just come down seeking brains so okay what's next well we are obviously needing to open this door ahead of us so I think that's what we need to do who are we going to do it with, though? I think, actually, we're going to do it with Rawdon. Um, so, we are going to go... One, two... Uh, that goes there. And then we have another zombie in here. So, 
three, four. So, Rodin can see now, look, I open the door, goes to um, aggressive, uh, which means that in between this, well, I mean, they can't interrupt anyway because there's nothing in the uh, um, exploration deck at the moment, so, but, yeah, I did it, guys, I did it. <laughs> anyway, Rawdon's going to attack the zombie. Uh, stats for a zombie. Uh, attack 2, movement 4, defence 1, uh, range 0, obviously. Um, I need 2 damage in order to take these out. Rawdon has a combat dice of 4. This, the zombie has a combat dice of 2. So, Rawdon. Needing twos. That one didn't go through. Those didn't save. We have a splattered zombie. Check to interrupt. No, inter no interrupt cards. Let's continue. Uh, who's next? One, two, three, four. Right, now. Olaf can make it over to the door to open it but then he can't do anything else so hmm i think that might be an idea because we can always use danol or madriga as range support if there's anything behind the door so yeah let's do that olaf one two three four Open the door. Um, there's a door now here. Incidentally, by the way, I am looking to get some open door um, models to use instead of the tokens. Um, they probably won't be around for the next uh, video, but they might be around for mission three, so bear with me um, and uh, hopefully we can we can sort that out. So, um, what am I doing? Yes, I'm putting stuff out, aren't I? Right, there's another blockage here. Have I put this out right? No, I haven't, because I am a Nana. This needs to go this way round. Many apologies, guys. Would help if I learnt how to read. Right, I thought that was a bit strange. So, there's a blockage there. Uh, we have a skeleton warrior standing here. We have a skeleton archer standing here. Where there is in fact actually another blockage. And I've just realized. Nope, I'm alright actually. Okay. So um oh, there's also a Skeleton warrior at the bottom here, and if you've seen one of my other videos, you'll know I'm terrible at this. Um, there's something in this corridor, and I've forgotten to take the token out, so bear with. Um, I'm gonna get the tokens out, uh, bear with me for a moment. Okay, guys, I'm back again. Um, sorry about that. Uh, right, what I forgot to put out is that some dungeons have dangerous traps in them as represented by these counters. Now you might think well they're not much of a trap if I'm going to know what they are which is true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them all face down like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Now six of those have trap effects on them. Um, 
and the other two have Orklings on them, which mean that they don't do anything. So I'm just going to shift these around a little bit. I don't know which ones are which. I've got to pick out three. Well, actually, no, I'm going to put them all over here. I'm not going to pick out three. I'm just going to take one at random. So we're going to go with this one. Now, there's an arrow there, which means that the, uh, the trap is actually set off if you land on any or move through any of these four squares. So we have to be careful here. Um, also, I think I might have bottleneck myself a little bit here. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, also, sorry guys, one sec, I'll be right back. Right, sorry about that guys. Um, anyways, I'm back. And where were we? Morden destroyed the zombie. Olaf opened the door. I realised I'm useless at organising games. So, yes, here we are. Uh, well, at least I'm not going to, you know, there's going to still be some enemy models on the, on the board for the Overlord to have a turn with. So, who's next then? Uh, Madriga, I reckon. One, two, three, four, five. Well, she can get... She can get in front of the door, which means she should be able to take out that nearest skeleton. But she could then end up getting shot at herself. I think that's fine. I think she can she can handle um, taking one wound. She's a big girl. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And she's going to take a shot at this skeleton. So four dice for Madriga. Needing this is a skelly, so she needs threes. She got all of her threes, and the skelly did not save any of them. So there we go. That's one less stress, I guess. Um, now, okay. Uh, Danor's not going to do anything except he's going to move into this room. Uh, where was he? Here? One, two, three. Well, he's going to move to there anyway. And he's going to search the room. And what do we find? A bag of gold. Nice. So. Uh, find a small bag of gold that has 25 coins in it, which is nice. So Danor has 25 gold. If you take the gold, roll a single die on a score of two, a, hero, a hidden mechanism triggers ending that hero's turn. The overlord may immediately open the nearest unlocked door, revealing any contents and activating a revealed monster. Well, I've also realised that um, there's another door I haven't put down, because otherwise we ain't... <laughs> We're not getting out of this room very easily, so there's a door there. Um, but anyway, so let's see what happens. On a two or less, the uh, door opens. Yep, that's a one. So the closest door to Danor is this one, which <laughs> I forgot to put down just now. So, right. So this door is opened, but strangely enough, there's another open door here. So we can reveal the contents of that room as well. Uh, we have a skeleton warrior here. Oh dear, this is going to be, this is bad for everybody involved. Well done, Danor. You've completely messed this one up. Um, we have a zombie here, we have a zombie standing in front of the door, kind of, uh, 
we have a bookcase in this room. We have another skeleton warrior. Come on, thank you. Hiding behind the bookcase. But then also we have a treasure chest. <clears throat> okay. So this is where we're gonna get swarmed a little. Well done, Daniel. Um so we have to start with the enemy that's furthest away from the heroes. Now when it comes to squares actually moved to get there, I think it's going to be that skelly behind the bookcase, actually. And that means that he's just going to move as far as he can towards them. So one, two, three, what's his movement? Four. Then I think it's going to be this guy. Uh, he, does, he also moves four, so one, two, three, four. Then it's potentially this guy, so one, two, three, four. Then maybe this guy, one, two, three, four. Uh, now this guy, one, two, three, four. And then technically it's going to be the archer. He's going to shoot Madriga. Um, so he's going to need. He's got three combat dice. So he's going to need. What's her armor? Madriga is armor two, so he needs threes. So he's got two, and her combat is also three. So let's see how she fares. Uh, the six soaks the five. And four soak the three. So yes, thankfully Madriga was able to soak that attack. But now this skelly, they don't set off traps by the way, incidentally. One, two, three, four. Right, now we are in trouble. Um, we are in a whole heap of trouble. Um, what are we going to do now? We can potentially disregard that zombie at the back coming from our starting position for the moment um, but we are going to need to get rid of um, Get rid of some of these enemies. So, um, Madriga is going to shoot that skelly right in front of her. I've got an idea. Um, yeah, she's going to shoot that skelly directly in front of her. I mean, she could use her feet and try and take out the three enemies directly close to, closest to her. But that's... Well, she could also actually di completely disregard the zombie for the moment and take out the archer as well. Yeah, do you know what? She is going to use her feet. She's going to use hail of arrows, which means she's going to shoot three times. She's going to shoot, the, firstly, the skelly that's directly in front of her here. So, needing threes... Right, evidently shooting three times is um, taking it out of her a little bit. And that skelly soaked it. Um, she's going to take another shot at... No, she's not. She's going to shoot this guy next. Um, that's kind of messed up my plan a little bit. But doesn't matter. We're going to shoot this guy next. That's a bit better. That's a lot better. So he's gone. 
now we're going to shoot the archer um, needing twos only for the archer um, and there's combat two as well all right so it's those two but still did two damage so that archer is dead now there's no target priority rules thankfully so um Right, now Madriga Actually the feet takes up the whole turn, doesn't it? So she can't move or do anything else now, I don't think. So can one, two, three, hang on, one, two. Right, Rawdon can get out to attack this guy so he can go one two three and he's going to attack this skelly so Rodin needing threes getting two skelly trying to soak two threes he's soaking one of them which means that skelly is annoyingly still alive because I need to do two damage on it um, we are going to have to use Olaf to take the um, to, to, to smack him aren't we so we're going to just move him around here and hopefully with a nice big swing of his axe he can take out this annoying skeleton Needing threes. Okay, Skelly can't soak it. Well, he can't survive it anyway. I mean, he soaked one of them. It was a it was a valiant effort, Skelly. But in the end, three heroes attacking you was just too much. Now, I mean, we could we could give it a go. We'll um bring Danor out over here and we'll use burn on the uh, on the zombie so burn basically uh, select the target up to four squares away one two three four oh sorry and you didn't see that either, sorry. One, two, three, four. Uh, target does not need to be visible, suffers a four dice attack. Right, so. Um, four dice then, it is. On the zombie, needing twos. And the zombie's combat is two. He doesn't soak any of them, so he has been toasted to a crisp. Nice work, Danor. Right, well that's thinned the herd a little bit. Um, I think, I think, I think, I think. Do I? Probably not as much as I should. Um, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Enemy's turn. Ooh, yeah, we'll do this guy. One, two, three, four. I mean, none of them can get into range really anyway, so it doesn't make much of a difference. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Actually, that zombie wouldn't move there, would he? One, two, three. Yeah, he was here, wasn't he? He'd actually probably move to here because he'd stay outside enemy enemy movement. Uh, one, two, three, four. 
you probably actually go there, thinking about it, because um, he has a he has a swarm mindset. Um, so he doesn't actually actively engage. He waits for them to come to him, which is um, not something I thought about actually previously. I just kind of ran everything up into them. Think about mindsets, Mark. I'm keeping this very professional today, aren't I? Forgetting tokens, forgetting the mindsets. I mean, I'll be forgetting all the rules next. So, anyway. Um, we are going to voluntarily now set that trap off, and I think the best person to do so is Rawdon, because he's probably the best person that can take it, dependent on what the trap is. So, let us have a look-see. Before we do, there's a little bit in the rulebook about traps. So he's just going to go and move and actually just stand on it. So what is it? It is in fact actually an orkling. So, one, two, three. So after all that, that wasn't a trap. Um... Is he going to open that door? No, but he is going to stand in front of it. Now, usually when you set off a trap, uh, the hero's turn ends, but that wasn't a trap. So I don't think it counts there. Um, okay, then. What's next? Uh, can we do some creative targeting in order to shoot that skelly? Can Madriga get down there? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, she can. So she's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Which means she now has straight line of sight to this skelly through the door. And that's who she's going to shoot. So. Four dice. Needing threes. Skelly in the face. Mm, one didn't go through. But. Come on Skelly. Don't do this. There we go. Madriga showing she's a short shot. Even through a doorway. This is what happens when you mess with elven rangers, I guess. Um, so what we've got on the board now are two zombies. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I think we're soon going to be one zombie. Because this one's about to get splattered all over a wall. Again, I haven't opened any doors. I've been killing enemies, so the overlords can't interrupt me, even if he could. There aren't any interrupt cards. So I could use an interrupt token. I keep forgetting I have them, but I don't tend to use them an awful lot anyway. So uh, anyway, attacking the zombie, needing twos. Uh, there's two ones. So, but that didn't help the zombie. The zombie is in fact dead. It is an ex-zombie. To cease to be, it has joined the quiet eternal, the yada yada yada. Thank you, John Cleese. Um, that zombie at the back could be annoying, but I think we can ignore him again for the moment. So Danor is going to come down here and go one, two, three, four, five. Just to be on the safe side, he does need five, doesn't he? Yes, uh, and he's going to explore the room and hopefully doesn't set off another trap. Well, mechanism. Exploration. Oh no, he sets off a trap. Uh, the hero triggers a trap and should roll a die to see what kind of trap it is. So it is in fact a falling rocks trap. So. 
If a falling rock's trap is triggered, the hero player must roll a single die. If the result is equal to or greater than their movement value, then the hero suffers one damage. So basically, he rolls a five or a six, he takes a point of damage. Which he doesn't, so he's okay. Now, that's now got a interrupt card on it, an interrupt um, icon on it. So, um, yeah, that could uh, trigger some interrupts should the Which, I mean, that would have flipped over because the trap was triggered, but, I mean, it doesn't make a difference because there's no interrupt happening now. That was the last thing, the last player turn. So, anyways, one, two, three, four. He's going to go there. Um, we're going to have to take him out now because he's in line of sight. So, um, back to us then. Uh, or Lash. Olaf is just going to pretty much stay where he is. He's going to move over to here. And he's going to search this room. And he finds a marauding monster. Uh, the hero's turn ends immediately. Well, it would have anyway. Uh, the Overlord may place any Marauding Monster model in any square adjacent to or within five squares of the Exploring Hero. The Overlord may then activate their uh, new Hero model, the uh, new Monster model. Right, so, that is in fact actually a zombie. So a zombie has just wandered into the room and is attacking Olaf. Um, so, two dice for the zombie. Needing threes, five dice for all left to defend, and he doesn't. So, this surprise attack has actually cost him a point of damage. Um, but I think he's beefy enough to take that. However, the overlord then rolls a single die. On a score of a five or more, they may place one more additional marauding monster at least five squares away, but cannot activate it. And yes, of course, because where there is one zombie, there is usually another one. So one, two, three, four, five. This one is just about to come into the room. Right. Um, that's somewhat irritating. <laughs> Um, that's put a bit of a, well it hasn't put a spanner in the works as such, it's just kind of, um, just going to sort of move this on a little bit, I think. So, uh, let's carry on with what we were doing. Um, Rodin is in fact actually going to turn around and open that door now. Um, so, one. What is in this room? There is a treasure chest. No, there isn't. I'm looking at the wrong room. There is a table in the middle of the room. There is a skeleton warrior standing on the other side of it. There is a skeleton warrior up here. And that is pretty much it. So that was one. Sorry, keep looking the camera. Two, three. We're going to take on this skelly because how dare he decide that he was going to come in here or just appear or just exist, in fact. Foul undead spawn. Um, I'm going to stop rabbiting now. So, four dice for Rorden. That's not great. <laughs> um, I can't actually damage him um, with that. So, I'm not going to roll the uh, soaking roll. That was terrible. Um, 
That was terrible. Um, which also means, because I attacked an enemy and didn't defeat it, the Overlord's now aggressive. Because of course it is. Um, Madriga is going to go ahead and shoot the zombie that's been following us. Um, I mean, just get rid of him. Just for, you know, simplicity's sake. So needing twos. Zombly soaking. Keep that one though. Um, didn't soak it. Dead zombly. Uh, she's just going to stay where she is though. Well, actually, no, she's not. She's going to move because she can shoot and then move. So she's going to move over to here. Um, Danor, on the other hand, is going to be brave, and he is going to, ooh, 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 ooh. now, he is going to go one, two, three, and he is going to use Sea of Flame. Uh, all monsters within two squares suffer a three dice attack at an armor roll of minus two. Once these attacks are resolved, roll a dice. On a five or six, the casting model suffers one damage. So he's doing an AoE attack, which will, where he's standing, hit both of those skellies. So we're going to do the one that's in front of him first. Three dice attack at minus two armor, where he can only go down to, he can only go down by one. So needing twos. I get them all. However, that skelly evidently is flame resistant for some reason, some inflammable skelly. Um, what about this other one that's having a quiet word with Rawdon? That's unfortunate because he's now going to get a smack in the face. That's a little bit better. Okay, well that soaks that, but this one didn't do anything, so this one's gone which makes things a little easier. Um, uh, we should be checking every round for um, interrupts. Well, the first card in the exploration discard, it's a bag of gold, it doesn't have an interrupt icon on it. The second one, however, which this was going to happen now then, was the trap that we triggered that does have an interrupt on it. So this means that now we get to do an interrupt and it's going to be this skelly is going to attack Danor. Um, so he's going to do his thing. He's going to attack Danor with his two dice and Danor's combat of two as well and his armor of one. So the skelly needs twos. Um, yeah. Oh, that's not great. He soaked one, but well, I mean, heroes only get one point. Uh, do they only get in this one? I can't remember now. Yeah, only one point of damage per attack anyway, so he takes a point of damage. Um, right. So now, uh, because damaged, use that interrupt token there. Um, to show that he's acted, so um, he can't act again in the Overlord's turn. Right. Olaf is the only person that's left to attack. So he's going to take a swing at the zombie standing in front of him. It, you know, it'd be mad not to, wouldn't it? Racking up the uh, trophy zombie heads. Twos. Uh, so it's that one. That didn't do anything. Dead zombie. Uh, okay. So. Um, that's the hero's turn. 
it's now the Overlord's turn, and only the zombie can attack. Now, swarm in sight. Uh, right, yeah, he's going to move into combat. One, two, three, four, and attack all left, which is never a smart idea, but he's going to do it anyway. Uh, all left has a defense of two, so he needs threes. Okay, they've all gone through. Four and a three will do this. Won't defend against that though, a five and a six will nullify that roll. So, back to me then. Danor is going to be a little bit brave. He's going to try and take that skelly out, to be honest with you. Um, he's going to drink his battle potion which uh, he can use at any time, uh, gives him plus two dice to his next fight action. So he gets plus two dice, his combat is two, so he's now rolling four dice in combat, uh, needing threes. I'll keep that one as it rolled in the uh, dice tray. That was a one. Um, let's just hope that the skelly doesn't soak it. Oh, come on. I mean, to be fair, he is a wimpy little uh, wizard. So um, we are now just going to have to take one, two, three. Oh, hang on a minute. No, we should have done that. And before he does anything, because it's aggressive, the next card in the discard pile is Marauding Monster, which has an interrupt on it. So we're going to go Skelly against Danor again because he's already been wounded. So two dice for the Skelly, needing twos. Oh, that was handy. Two dice for Danor now because the battle potion's worn off. And thankfully he soaked it. Um, now, because he didn't do any damage, I believe that he doesn't take, use the uh, interrupt token. So he can act again in the Overlord's phase. Uh, but now, Rawdon's going to come around here. One, two, three. And bash him in the face. Um, 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 um. I'm just going to quickly check up on the rules quickly. Um. Yes. Right. Just had to remember the outnumbering rules. Uh, basically, that skelly is at minus one dice um, because actually, I think the minimum you can roll is two dice and one armor. Is it? Um, right. Okay. What happens is because he's already rolling two dice, he goes down by one armor instead. So he's actually armor one now, as he's outnumbered. So Rodin, he still rolls. The, the uh, skelly still rolls two dice, but he's just a minus one armor. So, Rawdon, needing twos then. Still fails once. Skelly, on the other hand, still takes two hits. So this skelly is finally taken care of. Uh, Madrigar is going to shoot the zombie through the door. I don't think there's a restriction on shooting in into combat. I could be wrong. Nope, there's no um, no restrictions on that. So cool. I'm going to shoot that zombie in the face. Well in the side to allow Olaf a bit of breathing space. Not that he needs it, he hasn't been injured. It's Danor that's been injured. He needs to heal himself. Um, 
Well, I guess, you know. Olaf's now going, careful Madriga, you almost shot me. Madriga's going, shut up, you beefhead. Um, whatever that means, I have no idea. Right, so anyway, yeah. Takes out the zombie. Almost shooting Olaf in the process. And Olaf is now free to explore. So he's going to go five. One, two, three, four, five. Now he's in a room with a treasure chest. Let's just take that off to represent it's being searched. Uh, he gets to pick two exploration cards. We resolve them in order. So the first one, Olaf has found a healing potion, which is nice. The second one, Olaf has found some gold. Uh, it's only 10 gold, but 10 gold's better than none gold. Let's have a, I've got a 10 coin, there we go, thank you. Uh, if you take the gold, roll a single die, on a score of two or less, a hidden scorpion stings your hand. Okay. Nope. Yeah, I mean, it might have, but to be fair, if the scorpion stung or left, the scorpion would die. So, um, there we go. Danor and Orlaf having some money, which is nice. Um, technically, as there's a hero on the next tile, um, this would kind of end up here, I believe, to spawn. Oh no, because we've still got models on this tile. Okay, that's a bit ambiguous, that one. Guys, um, let me know in the comments what you think. I think because we've still got people on this tile, this one stays here. But that would mean that that zombies, if when it spawns, which it will do, uh, will have to come all the way back round to us. Um, you let me know in the comments how you um, how you see that rule. As all that's now on this second board tile, uh, would you move that spawn token? To closer to the edge of the tile. Let me know. Um, anyway. Speaking of zombie, let's spawn him. Okay, uh, that turns round. Um, um, um. Um, right. Uh, I don't think, to be honest with you, I don't think Daniel really needs to heal himself right now. Because Healing Spring recovers two health. So I think he can take one more point before he needs to worry about healing. Orlaf is, here, is also taking a point of damage, but he's got a healing potion. Um, but I don't think he needs to worry about that right now either. Um, so I think... Right, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Danor is searching that room he's in. And would you believe it? Who'd have thunk? But there is in fact, actually, previously unnoticed, but behind, I don't know, a rag or a painting or something in the wall, there is a secret passageway. Look at that. So, the secret passageway in this hidden room, rather, we have. What do we have? We have an armoured zombie. I'm actually really regretting doing this now. Um, and that treasure chest that I accidentally put down earlier on. <laughs> it's actually in here. So there we go. Uh, so Danor has searched, he's going to stay where he is. Rawdon 
however, is going to take out that armoured zombie because they are a pain. Now, look at these stats. Armoured zombies. Three, uh, three combat, three defence. Um, and you need two damage to take it out. So you need fours to wound it. And it's rolling three dice to soak. They are quite tough, armoured zombies. Quite a step up from your regular vanilla kind over here. So, uh, yeah. I'm um, going to try and take that out as soon as possible. And as soon as possible, I'm hoping that's going to be now. So, one, two, three. Smack that zombie in the face, Borden. Do us all a favour. Send... Send that, sorry, my uh, other camera just um, died on me for some reason. I don't know why. Apologies. Um, if you can't see the dice tray for any rolls uh, recently, that will be why. I didn't notice it died on me. Uh, anyways, apologies. Uh, however, now that's been sorted and we're going to uh, roll to smack this armoured zombie. Send it back to the graveyards of Basileia. I'm still in you know, I still reckon that these armoured zombies are Basilean. So, yes, I need fours. I don't get any fours. Hmm. Dwarf lets out a very dwarven growl in disappointment, which I'm not going to do for fear of offending any dwarves that may be watching. Um, can I do anything with Madriga? One, two, three, four, five. She can get... No, she can only get behind Rawdon. She can't... Which means I don't think she'll be able to shoot the Skelly. I mean, there's no rules for shooting into combat, so she could shoot over his shoulder. But I'm going to do that. But if you guys think that I shouldn't be able to, let me know in the comments and I won't do it again. Um, but I don't see why this is this is a bad move. But anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, she is like three miles taller than the dwarf anyway. So she should be able to shoot over his shoulder. And she's now going to shoot at the armored zombie. Maybe I should have kept the... Uh, kept the feet to shoot this zombie three times. Lordy knows I need it. Uh, right, fours. And again, this is a very, very well-armoured zombie. Once again, no, on eight dice, I have not scored a single four. Hmm. Well, evidently I used up all my good rolls at the beginning. I can see how this is going now. Right, okay. So... Uh, I've lost track of what I was... Oh no, right, okay, so everybody over there's acted and Orlaf hasn't? No, he hasn't done anything yet, has he? We was contemplating healing him, but he didn't, so... Do you know what? He's just going to go off and do his own thing. He can, he can take it, he's quite tanky, he's got a healing potion, he doesn't care. He's just going to wander off, search for riches and treasure and glory and... Whatever else it is barbarians do. So. One. Two. What is in this room? A door. And that's it. Three, four, five. There's nothing else in this room. Well, he's going to search it then. Uh, well, I mean, we could do that. This is the last hero turn, so... He's found another stash of gold. We like it. 50 gold this time for Orlef. So he's going to take it. Of course he is. 
but there's something that comes with it. If you take the gold, roll a single die. Uh, on the score of two or less, you disturb some poisonous mushrooms that burst in your face. The exploring hero takes a single point of damage. Well, seeing as how my rolls have been quite piss poor just now, Bear with for a moment. I do apologise, I will be right back. Um, I'm having camera issues. Okay guys, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. I really, I need to, you know, sort these issues out. Um, ran out of storage on one phone and, <clears throat> um, you know, kind of then another one running out of battery and I mean <clears throat> teething problems but we'll um, have it sorted for the next one I promise um, but yes anyway where were we <clears throat> I believe Olaf finished the turn off by moving into that room and he found a stash of gold I seem to remember um, it's been about an hour or so for me to try and sort that issue out so uh, yeah it's been a while I believe that's where we were so uh, <clears throat> we shall continue with the overlords turn then now um, we've only got two models on the board so we're going to go one two three four that zombie is going to haplessly mindlessly against his own comprehension start moving through the dungeon um, and then we have this armoured zombie which is going to cause us no end of issues I can just see um, <clears throat> just out of interest actually Aha. right okay I've got a way that we can deal with this, I think. So, okie dokie. Um, we, the armored zombie is going to attack Rawdon, of course, because he's kind of right there. So, armored zombie has three dice in combat, and he needs fours. Well, he got two. And Rawdon's defence. Uh, that's soaked to the five. And that's soaked to the four. So, yes. Rawdon has, in fact, actually soaked the damage. This is good. This is good. Right, we'll flip that back over then. <coughs> and it's now... Back to us. Now, what's going to happen? Danor is going to go one, two, three, four, five and stand in this room. Now, this is another reason as to why I chose Hydromancy, is for situations like this. There is a Hydromancy spell called Crushing Depths where the target must be visible until the end of the round, the target has both its movement and armour reduced by two to a minimum of zero. So that's going to be handy to try and take out this armoured zombie. So he's casting that right now on this armoured zombie. Um, <clears throat> and Rawdon is now going to proceed to smack it in the face now that it's been uh, significantly weakened. So, Armoured Zombie at minus two armour is now armour one, so Rawdon now only needs twos, which is so much better. See? However, he gets three dice to try and soak it with. All three of which fail to do so. I mean, that's pretty nifty. 
So there you go, working together, the dwarf and the mage take out this annoying armoured zombie. And it lives, well, they live to fight another day. Now that there's nothing in that room, Madriga's going to search. We're going to uh, remove the lid from the chest. And let's see what cards we get. Firstly, oh great, we get a marauding monster. Well, that's a zombie. Um, which are we gonna? We're gonna have to put. Are we gonna have to put that next to Madriga? Or five spaces away? I mean, it wouldn't make sense for it to just pop up there. But then again, it wouldn't make sense for it to just pop up in that room either. At least when that one came at Orlaf, there was a door. Uh, well. Pop it next to Madriga, seeing as how she uncovered it. It does say adjacent to. Um, and then we roll a dice to see if another one turns up on a five or six. No, thankfully, this room's getting crowded. And the second card is a trap. So maybe that wasn't the best thing to do after all. So the trap is a gas trap and so the gas trap if a gas trap is triggered sorry if a gas trap is triggered the hero player must roll a single die if the result is equal to or less than the current armor value the hero is safe otherwise the hero suffers one damage madriga's armor is two so she needs a one or two to be okay and she rolls a three so she takes some damage so basically, coming in this room was a wildly bad idea, but we weren't to know what was in the uh, what was in the chest. <sighs> right. Well. Well, now. Okay. Uh, that's a surprise trap. So that's um, turned us over to aggressive. Is there going to be an interrupt? Nope, because the bottom card on the interrupt pile was a bag of gold, so we've got no no interrupt there so that's all three of them done in that room i mean madriga could move but she's there's no point she'll take a free hit from the uh, zombie so olaf what are you gonna do well he's actually just going to move down in front of this door one two three four he's not going to open it just yet um because that would be silly opening a door and then not knowing what's behind it so it's the overlord's turn again once again starting with the model that's furthest away one two three four and now this zombie that's next to madriga is in fact going to attack madriga um so Two dice for the zombie, needing threes. Three dice for Madriga, and she soaked it. So, right, back to us. Um, 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 um. Let's, let's do all that first. He's going to open this door um, yes, he is. So, one. Uh, there's another trap in here. Here, I'll take this one again at random. I don't know what it is. One movement so far. got in here we have a skeleton archer we have a zombie and oh no another armored zombie <clears throat> so 
He's moved one so far. He's going to get swarmed by zombies. Two, three. I mean, there's no way he can avoid this. He's going to be in the front arc of two models. Um, so he is going to attack the armored zombie of course because that's the biggest threat in this room he needs fours but thankfully he's got he doesn't have five he's got only got four dice to do it with this time because he's at minus one as he's uh outnumbered actually do you know what he might do then he's going to attack the regular zombie um he's not moving down at the moment because there's a trap there and that would end his turn so he's going to attack the regular zombie to try and get rid of the outnumbering because <clears throat> that would be easier to take out than the armored zombie is and we can just focus our, our attacks on that next turn um, so yes normal zombie so four dice needing twos there you go the normal zombie can't actually save can't um, withstand this now he takes four wounds, so yeah, normal zombie's gone. I think that's the best way to deal with this. Because if I, that was against the armoured zombie... Well, I mean... <clears throat> all of them would have still gone through. Oh, well, I've done it now. It doesn't matter. That was quite a good roll for... But then again, you know, he's still now back to full combat strength when defending. So that's quite nifty. Um... Anyway, let's deal with what's going on over here. Vorden's going to turn around and smack the zombie in the face. Now, the zombie can't be reduced any further because it's the weakest thing. It's already got the weakest stats. So, um, four combat dice for Vorden, needing twos. Not quite as successful as Olaf. soaks that one but that doesn't soak that one it's still two very weak attacks but it still takes out the zombie so that's quite cool so let's do what we can to try and assist Olaf then shall we let's just get the hell over there um, so we've got one two three four five six for madriga she's gonna face that way just in case that zombie decides to cause any trouble um who out of these guys needs healing really no one in particular um so we won't worry about that for the moment then one two three four five Okay, oh, oh, I'm... Rorden could have moved after attacking, and I completely forgot about that. Okay, right, let's not be so impetuous this time. Dwarf's kind of gloating and realise that nobody's hanging around to revel in his victory against a zombie. Um, right, so... Uh, Overlord's turn. Yes, I killed that zombie, so it didn't become aggressive. Uh, Overlord's turn. One, two, three, four. See, I knew this was going to be a problem. <clears throat> uh, we then have the archer attacking Orlef. Uh, skeleton archer has three. So uh, we are needing threes with the archer. <sighs> two sixes, not great. But he's back to his full combat strength now. Can I get two sixes on five dice? No, I, one six. Um, let me just read something here quickly. So anyway, Olaf has taken a point of damage irrespective. Um, so I was hoping I might be able to use a 
a health potion and then smack the armoured zombie, but then he'd be too busy fighting in order to take a draft of that potion, I guess. So, probably not. Um, uh, Unstoppable is not going to help him here. Um, right, okay. Well, there's nothing else I can do there. The armoured zombie is attacking Olaf. So, three dice for the zombie. Needing threes. Well, what is it with these sixes for the undead? Come on. At least one didn't go through. Maybe he shouldn't have just charged in here on his own. I mean, that was a six. Uh, right, well, none of them saved, so he's taken another point of damage. He's down to his last wound. He needs to... Um, attack. He needs to kill this armoured zombie. <clears throat> um, else, I don't know what else we're going to do. Um... I've got an idea though. Uh, the the Danor's healing string. Um, the target, the, the caster does not need to be visible, or the target does not need to be vi uh, visible to the caster. So if I can get within six squares of Orlaf, <coughs> I can heal him through the walls. Um, so that would be, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, yeah, that's within three. So, we are going to do that. But, <coughs> we are also going to use his um, feet of focus. Uh, discard this card when uh, casting a spell. Select a spell and use it as normal. However, instead of discarding the spell card, it is retained and can be used in later rounds. So I'm not discarding Healing Spring. Um, actually, do you know what? I might not do that. Uh, actually, yes, I will. Yes, I will. I will tap his focus and keep Healing Spring because um, I might need to cast it again. So, that's two wounds back to Orlaf. Uh, Madriga's going to shoot that zombie and then move into the room that Danor's in, providing she's successful. Oh no, she's just going through anyway, to be honest with you. Uh, needing twos. Doesn't soak it. Yeah, there we go. See, dead zombie. <clears throat> okay. And then she's going to move up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Rawdon's just going to try and move as quickly as he can. He moves four. One, two, three, four. Well, he's out of that room, at least. Um, and... As soon as he steps onto this other board tile, I'm going to move that spawn point round. Um, but anyway, Olaf, come on, matey boy. Take out this, um, take out this armored zombie. That's a bit better. Now look at that. Now that one doesn't go through, but... Come on. Right. Well, that soaks that one. That does not soak that one. And that does not soak that one. So that's three damage. There you go. See, you keep wailing on it. And it will eventually fall over. Um, so the only thing that he's got left now is that 
skeleton archer and quite frankly actually to stop the skeleton archer from shooting him he's going to move into uh, combat with it <laughs> um, right well it is now the overlord's turn and the skeleton archer has no um, option but to punch Orlaf or hit hit Orlaf with his bow. So uh, two combat dice, needing threes, and Orlaf is now not very happy. I mean, I don't think he was to begin with, but he's very much not happy now. Um, right, one. Come on, Orlaf, you can roll another six, matey. Keep them coming. Or you can't. So <laughs> a lowly skeleton archer has taken another wound off of Orlaf. <clears throat> Which is fine because I think Orlaf can deal with him. Um, so yeah, okay. Um, let's we'll move Roiden up first because then I'll move the uh, um, spawn point. One, two, three, four. The spawn point then they first came on sort of around here so I'll put it there um, <clears throat> magic is gonna run round one two three four five six Daniel is gonna run round one two three four five six and he's gonna cast healing spring again this time I can't use focus to keep it um, and he's going to cast it on Olaf, obviously. So he, Olaf is now back to full health. Uh, which is nice. And speaking of Olaf, he's now going to take a swing at an archer that seems to be uh, wanting to introduce him to his bow in a very stout and abrupt fashion. So, yes, five dice. Needing twos, because he's an archer. And one misses, of course it did. Again, the archer can't save this, uh, but we're going to roll it anyway. Yeah, no, that archer's dead. Right, <clears throat> there you go. If it weren't for Dan, or then I, I think Olaf would be dead. But we've uh, we get in there. Right, okay, so that's us done. We're not done yet though, because um, we do have an objective, which I will mention when we actually get it so we do have um the overlord's turn again now spawning a zombie can't do anything though um and uh it's back to us then and Olaf is going to search that room and lo and behold dun 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 secret passageway and that is our objective. All we needed to do was find that secret passageway and that is our exit out of the dungeon. So, out of interest, what would the trap have been? It would have been a trap and it would have been a gas trap. <clears throat> so nothing too major. Um, but yeah, there we go. So, I'm going to tidy this lot up and we're going to do a bit of um, end game stuff and uh, we'll see if um, we can't find some shiny things for our characters to acquire um, so give me a moment and I shall be back once we've sorted this lot out and strangely enough it's not due to um, technical issues this time. So I'll see you in a minute. Bye bye. Okay, guys, welcome back. Um, we're uh, back to the end phase now. The uh, heroes have uh, encountered a merchant. And uh, even though we don't have an awful lot of money, let's just tally up what we got out of the uh, the dungeon there we've got 85 gold which to be fair 
probably not going to be a lot. Um, so we'll uh, see what kind of merchant this guy is, how much, what wares he has for us. Uh, we do this by rolling a dice. So we roll a two, uh, which means he's a basic trader. So he only has three items of equipment for us. Now, like I said, we probably um, don't have a, uh, enough to buy anything. Also, I've just realised you can't see the gold that I've acquired. There we go. 10, 60, 85. So this is, this is our party's funds for the moment. Thankfully, there's no upkeep in between missions. But, uh, yeah. So let's see what this uh, trader actually has for us, shall we? The first thing is a mail coat, which is 150 gold, so definitely can't afford that. The next one, I have shuffled these cards by the way, is an elven war bow, which is 300 gold. Yeah, not going to happen there either. And the third one is a great hammer at 200 gold. So, oh uh, yes, unfortunately, um, there are no items available that we can buy from the merchant trader at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's the end phase. Uh, we, we kind of remove those items that we found in the dungeon, like the battle potion and the potion of resistance and stuff like that. Um, however, the uh, the heroes they do get experience um they basically get one uh experience for completing the dungeon and one without using their revive token so they uh they all get two experience each that's not enough to gain any upgrades or anything at the moment but uh, it's something. So yeah, there we go. That's um, mission one, the Vesselus Dead from Trials of Tyranny in Dungeon Saga Origins. Um, aside from the teething problems, I enjoyed playing this again. Um, you know, I, I do like Dungeon Saga. I do like Dungeon Saga Origins. It's fun to uh, revisit again and I'm going to sort out these teething problems and I'm going to look forward to um, playing the next adventure. So, like I say, aside from the technical issues, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Uh, if I made any mistakes, of which I dare say I made a couple, uh, let me know. Uh, let me know what you thought about some of those ambiguous rules as well. And I hope to see you next time. So until then, keep on adventuring. See you later. Bye bye. I'd also like to give a shout out to my friends at the Nerd Hut in Ipswich. They have a great range of all things nerdy and gaming. So if you ever happen to be in the area, drop in and say hi and see what they've got available.